Hi there, I'm Tracy Kays from Johnson RV Rentals. Right here we have the 2018 Simplicity from Road Trek. Let's get started with the easiest thing to do here, and that's opening the door. You want to make sure you're standing directly in front of it and give it a good pop right up. And then the door will just open up and slide right along there. Okay? Go ahead and pop it back up and give it a close. We're going to continue on the exterior of the unit. Right here is where you have your propane. You won't be feeling this, but when you go to the gas station that does do fillable propanes for RVs, this is make sure that you're going to line it up to their propane tank and they will fill it. Just be aware that a lot of times they do shut it off. And so if you do want to have it on while driving, you get, you'll need to make sure you let them know to turn it on or just come out here. And this guy right here to the right will turn it on. Okay, let's continue on. Right here you have the awning all alongside here. This is where you're going to be putting in your awning handle to be able to run out your awning. And these are going to be the boots where you actually put in the awning legs. I'm going to show you where to get that next. These doors open all the way up, just like so. And here is your awning handle. You can just take this, it also telescopes if you need to make it longer, just like that. Come back over to here. All you have to do is get this sucker inside here, and then you can run the awning out. It goes a lot easier on the way out, and when you're bringing it in, it does take a little bit more effort. There we go. The awning rods are, awning arms here are pretty much straight, so you know that you've taken it out as far as you need to. Next thing you're gonna do, there are these orange tabs, also called flippers. Now, they can feel like you can't snap them up without breaking. So in order to bring the awning arms out, you just need to flip this orange flipper perpendicular, and then you're gonna push it to the right a little bit, which will release the awning arm from a washer over here. Next thing, I'm going to either put it in this boot right here, or you can also have it straight up like this, and then you just lock it. I prefer having it attached to the unit just because it's a little bit more stable like that. You need to lift this pin right here, and then you put the bottom of the bracket in there, and then the top. That'll hold it in there and then you can pull out your awning arm to whatever length that you want, but you have to make sure that now you've locked it, okay? So you do the same thing with the other side, and then you can make sure that they're equal and stuff, but, but to release it, you're gonna hold it and get it perpendicular again. It's gonna slide down. I'm over here lifting up the pin, pushing down on it will release it. And now, very important, make sure you give yourself an inch or two right at the end here because otherwise it will not fit properly into this section here. Next thing is you have to bring it all the way to this washer here and then one hand holding here, this guy will need to lock it inside just like that. Now all you're going to do is bring back the awning. So. Like I said, it's a little bit more effort bringing it back in, but very, very easy still. Keep it up. If you telescoped it, just bring it back down and fit it right in there. Here at the back of the Simplicity, we have lots of extras to go through. This is your fresh water hose. Now, this is for using on-demand water uh, at the RV park for city water connection and also for filling up your water on your onboard water tank. Okay, so to connect this guy, all you have to do is unplug this guy, thread this end of the hose into the city water connection, and the other side is just going to go to the spigot. This is a water regulator. 
And so, you know, this site is the site that's going to be going into the Spigaretoa RV Park. Okay? And next, we have some leveling blocks. Now, not all places that you stay at are going to be perfectly le level. So if you don't want the blood rushing to your head when you're sleeping, you may want to, you know, drive up on one of those guys. You have some seat belts over here. So in order to use them, you have to make sure you pass them underneath the bar and through the back right through here. Okay, because you can, you can sit two people back here as well. You have a tire jack, which I doubt you'll actually need, but it's always good to have in here. Inside here is going to be your shades for privacy up at the front windows. They're magnetic. There's three for the driver's side window, passenger side window, and then in the full windshield you have in here. Okay. Next, you have your shore power connection. So your shore power connection is going to be when you're at the RV park and you have electrical hookups. This is your shore power connection. So you have electrical at the RV park. This is a 30 amp machine here. So you're going to be connecting to a 30 amp plug. So you have three prongs. One's a little bit different than the other. So make sure you line that guy up and you fit it in and then give it a little twist to the right to lock it in. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to just plug it in to the power source at the RV park. Be aware most places will have the circuit breaker off. So you want to turn the circuit breaker on before you actually plug it in and, and get going because you won't have any power to the interior of the coach. If you end up going to a place where they only have a 50 amp connection, you do have an adapter here that you can just go ahead and put in here to be able to use it. If you're going to bring it home for a little while and you want to keep the battery charged up well, you also have a 15 amp adapter for that. So you can just plug these in but you never want to be running the AC or microwave on the 15 amp adapter. Before we head around to the other side I just wanted to point out that this is where your tabletop is located. It just slips right into there and it's used for the back and the front area. Okay so next we're going to talk about the dumping system. This is for your gray or your black tank. Gray is from your sink and shower, black is from the toilet. First things first I always tell people get your gloves on. Now this cover right here is set over a hinge so you have to make sure that you get the right sweet spot just to get it over. Okay so lift up and out and there you go. And then take that and just lift it all the way up and put it over to the side. Next, you're going to pull out the hose and as you're parked right next to the dump spot, you're going to take this guy, drag it out, and first thing you're going to take off the cover. Take off the entire cover right here, put it to the side, and let's say your dump hole is right there. You're just going to lay it right in there, easy just like that. Next thing, it's kind of hard to see, but I want to make sure that you can see it. Now this is your black tank valve right here. It's important to make sure that it is horizontal like this because if it's perpendicular, it'll hit this metal grate right here. It won't be fully extended. So go ahead and pull it all the way out. And then once that's extended, nothing's going to happen yet until you actually push the button for the pump. That's located right inside the driver's door. Okay, you have a red button right here. And what you're going to do is you're going to push this red button, which is going to be pumping out all of the waste in your black water tank. It's going to take 20, 30, maybe even 40 seconds. And you do have to push the button the whole entire time. You can also check to see if the tank is empty by going on the inside to the monitor panel. And we'll go over that later. So when you're pretty sure everything is all out of your black tank with the black valve open, you're going to come over to the gray valve. The gray valve is located right here, okay, and you're going to pull the valve open till it fully extended. Next, you're going to go do the same thing. You're going to walk over to the driver's side door, to the red button for the macerator, and you're going to push it in, and you're going to push it in the entire time. Again, 20, 30, 40 seconds, depending on how full your tanks were. You can go back inside to the monitor panel and check to see if the tank is empty. 
be very aware that several times you can get something stuck on these sensors. So even though you've sat here for a minute holding the button, the sensor is still showing that you still have one third full. Well, you probably have a particle stuck on the sensor. So as long as you spent the time dumping the tanks, go ahead and move on. I'm probably guessing the next time you dump, it'll actually clear its way out. So when you finish dumping, first and most important thing, you're gonna come over here and push in the black valve and then push in the gray valve. Make sure that that's a step you don't forget. Next, you're gonna take the hose and you're gonna shake it out because there's some remnants of the gray water still in the hose. So you wanna make sure you shake all of that out. And then just take the nozzle, go ahead and close it up tight. First thing you wanna put in is the nozzle. Otherwise, it's an extreme game of Tetris trying to get everything in at once. So get this guy to fit in and they don't give you a lot of extra space. So fit it in. The macerator cover and lock it up. Double check. Have I pushed in the gray? Have I pushed in the valve? This system right here is kind of like an emergency discharge system and we're not going to use that at all. So just leave this as is. You're just functioning with the black valve over here, the gray valve over here, and then your macerator hose. This guy will fit right over the glitch and you're done. Just a note of caution, above the dump station here, you do have some exhaust that really can get quite hot, so be careful of that. So now we're gonna head inside and we're gonna do the fresh water fill here. You just unplug this orange plug right here and your fresh water tank is located right behind your driver's seat. So you grab the hose from the back and one side goes to the spigot and the other side just goes right inside like this and that's how you fill your freshwater tank. Another great feature of the Simplicity is this outside shower. Great for rinsing off your feet after walking along the beach or when you've been taking the dogs for a walk. Your Simplicity comes with an underhood generator. It can help su supply the 110 power when you need it. The one caution of this is you cannot pull forward too far, otherwise you will end up denting, scratching, or scraping the casing for the underhood generator. So it's very important not to go further than the nose of the Simplicity. Okay, so now we're in the inside of the front cap of the Simplicity, and we're just gonna go over a few really quick things. On the left side here, you won't be able to see it, but it's actually where the e-brake is. Some people get confused about that. And this is the Dodge Pro Master chassis. It does not tilt down, it only telescopes up and back, just to make sure that you guys knew that. Across here, you've got Bluetooth connectivity, navigation, um, a lot, 12 volt charger, USB, and this is your open and close for the entry in the rear door there. Um, everything else is pretty simple. A really great feature about this unit is that both these front seats, they swivel. So in order to get it to swivel, and then you can actually use this as, with your table leg and your tabletop, but you just need to go ahead and pull this yellow lever up in the front of the cab in the seat area here, pull it up, and then the seats will just turn right around. All right, so welcome to Simplicity's Simple Kitchen. Right here we have a microwave that runs off of the 110 power either through the underhood generator or if you're plugged in. Right here you have a two burner propane stove top. Very easy to operate, just turn the knob over to the lightning bolt, go ahead and spark it up and there you go. Just make sure you wait till it cools down before you put the glass cover back on. You have plenty of storage for utensils and pots and pans and other items down below here. And then you have your sink, hot and cold water. Over here you've got your USB, you've got 12 volt charger, and you also have a 110. So if you're idling the engine, you'll have the inverter on, you'll be able to access the, those guys, and then also if you're plugged in. You've got some extra space here. You can utilize just as an office space or some extra countertop. When returning this table to the proper place, you do have to push the hinge right in there and then go ahead and drop it right back. Now to go along with your Simplicity's Kitchen, you have a really great refrigerator here. Just go ahead and push this tab right here and the refrigerator pops open. 
you have a small freezer compartment up the top here and then you have a really good size especially for an rv this size um, refrigerator space now really important thing to know is that when you turn the refrigerator on you want to make sure that if you're plugged in or if you're driving for a while go ahead you can leave the temperature setting to a four or a five but if you end up dry camping, you wanna make sure you have the refrigerator setting to the lowest setting possible because it will drain battery more. Next, we've got some cabinets that are really great. You just have to push this to open it up. And this is like a pantry. Make sure you don't load it down too heavy with uh, some objects because if you turn left, these things have been known to pop out on their own. So give it a push right there and that locks the cabinet shut. And you also have right under here something for pots and pans or anything like that but again don't overload the weight because that left turn may get you and that's the simple kitchen all right so next let's head over to the three-piece spa so right off the bat here you have your pedal push toilet and we have rv specific toilet paper that we do provide it's the only type of toilet paper you can use and we also have your sink here and your shower. So to use the shower, all you have to do is get your temperature setting and then pull the diverter in the middle here up and then the water will flow through the shower head here. Now, if you're using the water on board, you're gonna need to turn the water pump on. But if you're using the city water connection, that will provide your water pressure. But we'll go over that later. So this Simplicity comes with a great Blu-ray DVD player with a TV here. All you have to do is take off this protective screen here and you have a way to actually slide this guy with that and you can lock it in place. Inside this cabinet, you've got your TV remotes and this unit is actually a 12 volt, so you don't have to worry about being connected to 110 power to enjoy some movies. Your simplicity comes with plenty of storage. You have these overhead cabinets right here, as well as three other ones. And then you also have your underneath storage. So you've got it on this side and you've actually got a larger one right over here. So you can stuff whatever belongings you need to. And then inside this cabinet, you have your table leg. To set up the tabletop, all you need to do is unscrew this part of the table leg into the base section here, give it a twist, and then you can put the tabletop, which is located on the back door, right on top. So you have a table for your meals and your card game. The Simplicity has some unique windows back here. You can actually open this and have the window open like that, utilizing the screen, or you can have a blackout shape. When it's time for some shut-eye, you can easily unsnap this guy right here and pull down for privacy. And then you have your blackout shade again. Close this guy here. Now, you have two choices. You can either make this into a twin or you can lay it out with your power sofa to make it into a queen. Right over here is that button. Just go ahead and use this button to bring the sofa down to a bed. Now you can leave it just as this and you'll have two twin beds or you can go ahead and use the brace across to make it a full queen, which is located right here. You just pull this and it fits right between these two grooves, just so. And then you just pull these cushions in and then you have a full queen bed. So right here you have your rear AC system and a note of caution, this is your propane furnace here. So just make sure you keep this area clear when you. Separate from the front cab heater and AC system, you also have a rear AC and also a propane furnace. To operate these guys, you have to go over to the thermostat right here. First, you're gonna push the mode button just to wake it up, and then next is your fan setting. Now, I want to make sure that you keep it on auto at all times. So whether you're using the AC or the furnace, just make sure that the fan is on auto as such. Next, this is for cool for the AC. Now, this is only when you're plugged in to 110 power are you gonna be able to operate the rear AC. Next, 
is the furnace. Now your furnace is propane heated, so it doesn't matter whether you're plugged in or not, it's gonna run off the 12 volt battery for the fan and it's gonna be running off of your propane for the actual heat. If you ever find yourself pushing these two at the same time, you may end up clicking it over to Celsius. Don't worry about it, just go ahead and push the buttons at the same time again and it'll switch back to Fahrenheit. Moving along here, we have the patio light. This is an exterior light on the outside of the entry door. And then we have the water pump. So if you are not connected to city water, like at an RV park, you're gonna have to use the water pump to access the onboard freshwater tank, which is located behind the driver's seat. When you activate this, you're gonna hear the pump come on. And then you'll be able to use the sink, the shower, the toilet, and you're gonna hear the activating of the pump until you actually turn off the water. So don't be surprised with that. But definitely you will need to have the water pump on if you are dry camping. You will not have access direct to city water then. Next over here, you're gonna see an inverter on and inverter off. So your inverter is what, how you can access 110 power. So when you go to an RV park and you plug into shore power, the next thing you're gonna do, besides checking to make sure that they've turned on the breaker at that power source, plug into shore power, then you come inside the simplicity and you flip your inverter on. The inverter being on is gonna actually allow you to have 110 power in the unit. And while being plugged in, you're also going to be charging your house battery, okay? The next is your battery disconnect. You're gonna wanna always have this activated because this is gonna show you what your battery voltage here is right now. So if I turn off the battery disconnect, it completely shuts all power to the RV part of the unit. So the chassis battery and the house battery are two separate entities. So don't be concerned if you end up killing this battery for some reason, it doesn't mean that you won't be able to start the engine and drive away. Going back to the monitor panel, you wanna make sure that you can always see this battery voltage. So if for some reason you can't, probably means that somebody accidentally switched that off. So here we go. So right now it's saying that our battery is at 12.59. And when I go over to this sheet here, that's telling me I'm between full and half. I'm three fourths full, which is pretty good. It's really, really important to monitor this very, very carefully because when you're dry camping, not plugged in or not driving down the road, you're gonna be utilizing your 12 volt battery, your house battery, for things like your lights, this fan here, the refrigerator, that's a big draw, propane furnace for the motor part of it, and some other items too. All of that is draining your house battery. So you really have to be monitoring this when you're dry camping. And if you notice that it is starting to go low, lower let's say than 12, it's really time to give it some good charge. Now you have a few different options for charging the house battery. You can idle the engine because idling the engine will actually charge your house battery. Or if you're gonna be plugging in shortly after too, you don't have to worry about it as well because when you plug in, you come over here, turn the inverter on, that will help charge your house battery as well. Now, this unit has an underhood generator. So it's not like a regular generator that's off on the side. It's actually an alternator on steroids. So when you're idling the engine, you're doing a direct charge to your house battery, but the faster you go down the road, say 50 miles an hour, that is going to actually bring a lot more power into charging that house battery as well. So I always tell people, before you get, if you're dry camping, before you get there, <clears throat> go ahead and put the refrigerator on the highest setting. At that time, when you get to your location, turn it down to one or two, because that will really help save your house battery. So that was a simplicity tutorial. If at any time during your trip you have some questions, you can always refer to the manual, which is located right here. It goes into even more detail as well. So that was it. I'm Tracy at Johnson RV Rentals. Come on down here, pick up your simplicity, and hit the road.